We're at 91.3 WKMS, 90.9 WKMD in Madisonville, 89.5 WKMT Fulton, and all classical 92.5 Paducah. Well, we've been talking about it all morning, and uh, we have in the studio with us J.T. Oglesby, as soon as I get the mics going here. J.T. had a little trouble getting into the uh, to the area this morning, but he made it, and he's all tuned up and ready to go. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna pipe Joel Mabus down here in just a second. J.T., you you uh, you, you play all over the place. You, I, yeah. I, I, you play with the Solid Rocket Booster some, and oh yeah, who else you play with? Uh, Tommy Oliver from Ball and the Mash. He and I have a little side project. We do some Third Smile Thirds. I sit in with Dirt Dobber some. Um, I do solo things. Uh, I, there's so many, man. It's, it's hard for me to, to really keep track of, be truthful. Uh, mm-hmm. I get calls all the time, different people I'm sitting in with and want me to do this and that. And, now, to give people a little background, I was reading on your website all these bands that you've done work with in one form or another, mm-hmm. um, some of my favorites uh, on there. Um, now you're a session. You were a session musician, or, or did yeah. you tour with the bands? Or yeah, yeah, I, I, I was, and I still am. I still do session work a lot, and uh, um, I've been going more solo here lately um, versus the side man. So, you know, so, um, but yeah, through the years, back when I was like seventeen, uh, I, I won national championships on thumb style uh, guitar, and then I was like. 19, me and Chris Knight formed a band, and uh, we were signed with Decca Records and toured around with that. And uh, through the years, there was just tons of people that you know that I backed up. And then I then I actually quit music for a long time. I kind of got, yeah. I'm one of these, like, if I don't feel it, I'm not going to do it, you know? And I uh, lost the feeling, and uh, I quit. And I got to do session work again on weekends, and then it kept from weekends grew into weeks, and then it, you know, it's <laughs> kept going. Next thing you know, I'm back full force again with it and, and going with it. Well, some of the bands that, that uh, you've done work with uh, are listed on your website, like I yeah. said, which is, by the way, longlivekentuckymusic.com. But here's a list of the, of the people, uh, just, just a sampling of some of the people that, uh, that are listed that you've, you've worked on their projects, mm-hmm. including Patty Griffin, yeah. Fred Eagle Smith, oh, yeah. John <laughs> Prine, uh, Kim yeah. Ritchie, uh, one of my favorites, Hank Williams the yeah. Third. Some people don't know that there is a third out there, but oh, third. he's he's a rowdy guy. Oh, three's awesome. Yeah, I love yeah. Him, man. The Everly Brothers, of course, mm-hmm. Eddie Pennington from Princeton. Um, let's see here, who else? Uh, uh, some local acts. The oh, there's a lot that I, there's a lot that I just didn't even list. Yeah, you know, Bo, Did- Bo Diddley. I did some stuff with him, you know, and uh, uh, Marty Stewart and uh, some of the Headhunters, and yeah, you know, I'm out, you know I, I've been associated opening for playing, you know, just you know jamming with. So like, there's so many that I could have listed that I really didn't list. You know, I just quick quick list basically. Yeah, know. when you say the Headhunters, I suppose you mean the Kentucky Headhunters. Yeah, I'm sorry, the Kentucky Headhunters. Yeah, that's hey. been years ago too. Um, it was funny because our paths were crossing back. They used to be the Itchy Brothers. Yeah. And uh, I remember one night, one year, me and Chris Knight played this party down in uh, Bowling Green, and this cat was like. Um, Oh man, he, he paid us like you wouldn't believe. And he was like the whole weekend, just yeah, you know, we went up there and crashed, we played and and they were kept telling us they were like, Yeah, this guy, Tim, I think was his name. Said, Tim has an eye for talent, man. He has an eye for talent. He said, Everybody he has does something good. He said, Last year we had the Itchy Brothers up here and they kept on going on about the Itchy Brothers, you know. I was like, Well that's cool. They're like, I guarantee you all gonna do something good because Tim has an eye. Well, I mean, it wasn't long after it we signed with Decca, but but we got to talking the weekend during the weekend, of course, weekend. I was talking to somebody, and they were like the Itchy Brothers, the Itchy Brothers. I was like, man, who are the Itchy Brothers? I don't know. The like, guy's like, well, they go by the Kentucky Headhunters now, you know. And then later on, our paths crossed with the Everly Brothers, uh, um, the big homecoming con- concerts they used to have in Central City. And I crossed with them then, and uh, we got to talking and laughing about. It. And actually, me and Greg Martin, the guitarist for uh, the Kentucky Headhunters, we were laughing about that just the other day. You know, he remembered the guy in the party and the whole nine yards, and yeah, it's pretty great. That that band. Um the members in that band, the founding brothers, um, yeah, Doug Phelps, and uh, that's a um, huge family. And actually, oh, yeah. um, their cousin played. Uh, I played in a band with in Lexington. <laughs> um, yeah, he played bass in a band that I played in. Chris Ward. That's um, cool. And that's a huge family. And, and there was a band called Velvet Elvis out of Lexington that had family members in it. They were popular around Lexington for years, but. Um, the Kentucky Handhunters have family all over the place yeah. in Kentucky playing music. Well, we were we were in um, Arkansas. Savannah and I were in Arkansas uh, two or three weeks ago, maybe a little bit longer. I don't know. Um, 
and we rode right through Doug Phelps' hometown. You know, he was from Arkansas. There's a big sign on the road, you know, you know, hometown of Doug Phelps. It's pretty cool. I had to make the pilgrimage, though, because on the way back, we went to Dias, Arkansas, you know, where Johnny Cash is from. And I hate to say it. If, y'all, if anybody in Dias is hearing this, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I understand more why he's the man in black. <laughs> Well, we need to. We we probably should get to some music. Um, yeah. I'm sure you got some stuff picked out. And what are you gonna What are you gonna start with? This is one that I almost always start with because um, I'm almost uh, superstitious on this. <laughs> it seems like if I don't do it, the gig goes bad. You know, but this is an old banjo tune. Um, actually, Clarence Ashley was one I I really listened to a lot doing it, and uh, I took it and you know converted it over to the guitar to where I could play it, and it's called a uh, Ruben's Train. Here's J.T. Oglesby on WKMS. So Ruben built a train, put it on the tracks, ran into that lord of there. It's so mean, it's so mad, ran into that log Be lighting it up. We're getting just getting started with JT this morning here on the front porch. He's going to sit in with us at least, we hope, until the 12 o'clock hour. And who knows if I lock the door real tight, he might not be able to get away. <laughs> no, I'm not in any rush. <laughs> I'm joining. Now you're heading out. You said you yeah. might be heading to Louisville. You might be heading to Nashville. Or is that yeah. to, is that to yeah. play or to listen? Uh, well, what's funny is the Dirt Dobbers. I normally go to listen, and I wind up playing. Yeah, JD's giving me like this open invitation to play whenever I want to play. And uh, I really enjoy it. They're playing down in Nashville at the end, the Dirt Dobbers. And that starts at 9 tonight. It's right across. It's easy to find. Anybody knows where uh, Exit Inn is. It's just right across the road from the Exit Inn. It's on Elliston Place. And um, I haven't talked to J.D. or anything. It's going to be kind of a surprise thing when I pop in. But I always wind up playing with them. And um, Chris Knight is playing in Louisville. Um, I don't have any details at all about that. Cause he, I just talked to him on the phone yesterday, and he told me to come up. And uh, now that would be just to kind of listen because I mean, they were just good buddies and stuff like that. And I would go check him out, you know. So, yeah, tonight I really don't have an official gig tonight, but normally I always wind up playing where I go, you know. Now, JD is JD Wilkes, he's from yeah, Paducah. Yeah, sorry, JD Wilkes. Yeah, yeah, he's from Paducah, he's the uh, front man for the legendary Shack Shakers. Yeah, um, band, 
band that I I used to play in a band in Paducah, and we always uh, did some shows. But uh, he also has ties to Nathan Brown, who plays in the Solid Rocket Solid Boosters. Rocket Boosters. Yeah. So if you stick around and long Todd enough, Ander- Todd Anderson too. Todd's playing in there. He's a he he was part, he was one of the original legendary Shack Shakers. Yeah, the bass player. Mm-hmm. And now he plays with a bluegrass band out of Lexington. Oh yeah, little... the Blind Corn Liquor Pickers. Yeah, man, they are good. Yes, man. they are. Yes, they are. Lively. Oh yeah. Well, I, um, I jammed with them at uh, the Pluckin' and Cluckin' Festival last year. You know, and that's I, I met actually I met Nathan. Uh, last year, me and Tommy Oliverio and Johnny Keys did the show. And Johnny uh, uh, played the accordion with me and stuff like that, and Tommy played the, the mandolin with me. And uh, I did a gig the night before, and I was so tired. I couldn't even hold my head up hardly. So. But Tommy, I, I'm a, I've always been a huge Shack Shaker fan. So Tommy was like, you got to come down. It's the original Shack Shakers down at Lower Town Fest. So I went down to Lower Town Arts Fest, and I heard them. And we talked for a little bit, and that's kind of where we met. But what was funny is, like, with J.D. and I were talking, and Nathan and I were talking, and it turns out our paths crossed years ago. I mean, back, I'm talking about 94, 95, something like that. Um, I'd get done with DECA and I would go to Lower Broadway and I'd hang out at the Bluegrass Inn because that's where the Rockabilly was. And it was a really happening scene down there. I mean, Hank 3 was playing down there at that time. Joe Buck was playing down there, which Joe Buck was a Shack Shaker too later on. There was a band called the Connoisseur Rats. I dug, you know, Harry Fontana, all these real cool cats that were down there. And it turned out, you know, Nathan and JD were, were in with all of them and we'd all met, you know, down there years ago, you know. Yeah, that was really happening scene back then. I mean, that 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 area. So it's it's kind of funny because I'm playing with all these cats now, but you know our paths have crossed and we've actually been together for years and just didn't realize it. You know. Now I spoke with you. It's been a few months back. It was one of the live shows we had here on campus. On mm-hmm. campus, and you were talking about you lived in Seattle. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I, if I'm not mistaken, it was about the time that I was living in Seattle. <laughs> yeah. Back in like That's 90- another funny time. Uh, Lane Hendrickson, who, who who was playing with the Dirt, the dirt Dobbers, he, he quit. Um, but uh, he's not playing with them now. But he was with Dirt Dobbers. He and I are like really good buddies. And he was living in Seattle, too. I mean, so it's funny because I'm crossing paths all these people who were out there. Yeah, that was the big, that was the time. It was a great time, man. Yeah. That was back when, you know, the, the grunge explosion and everything. It was right before it. Right you before know. it. That's right. Oh, man. And the energy level out there was just through the roof, you know. I met Cobain one time when I was out there, but it's nothing big. What's funny, that's what's so funny. People will take things and, you know, just blow them out of proportion. You know, people have come up to me and been like, I heard you used to live with Kurt Cobain. And I was like, no, man. I was this. I was playing this bar out there. I missed a plane. I went and heard this. You know, my friend was like, you got to hear this band. You got to hear this band. So I went down, and then Cobain got off stage and walked by and got him a drink. And I was sitting there, and I was like, y'all sound cool, man. He's like, thanks. That, that was it, okay? <laughs> so for the record, anybody, but since then, people have taken it and just like, oh, JT was like, you know, him and Cobain were, but no, we weren't. It was just a brief encounter, but, you know, yeah. So you got some more music for me? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna do one. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I do, the style, a lot of the music I play, and the style that I play, is here. It's Kentucky music. I mean, straight up. It originated here. Originated over Muhlenberg County, um, with one of my personal heroes, Mose Rager, being the the father of it. And then it's been passed on generations, different ones. Mose taught Merle Travis, who, who took it out and made it famous. Mose also taught Eddie Pennington. You know, and Eddie you know, taught me. And in my mind, you know, Eddie is the the modern Mose Rager. I mean, he's really brought a lot of people to the style and done a lot to keep it alive, you know. So I'm going to play one of the songs that originated over there. I have to admit, there's a little bit of dispute over the author of this because there's a song that was actually registered early 1900s. It's Roll On Buddy. Well, Merle Travis wrote Nine Pound Hammer, which part of it is Roll On Buddy. Yeah, you'll hear that part in there. And uh, so there's a little dispute, but I'm sticking to my guns. I always say LLKM, Long Live Kentucky Music. That's my website, too. And so I'm diehard Kentucky on it. So, yep, that's Merle Travis's song. So <laughs> I'm going to sing it. It's called Nine Pound Hammer. <laughs> Thank you. 
little brew So get a little brew And when I'm long gone You made my tombstone I'm not not cool I'm not not cool So roll on buddy D-load a coal I can not roll My wheels won't go So roll on buddy D-load a coal I can not roll J.T. Ogles will be a nine-pound hammer here on WKMS. We're 91.3 WKMS, 90.9 WKMD in Madisonville, 89.5 WKMT Fulton, and also WKMS.org, where you can listen to a stream. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'm, that this is the first week that we will record the front porch in its entirety, and it will oh, yeah. be available on demand on the WKMS website. So, uh they're supposed to have had yeah, all that cool. set up behind the scenes, and hopefully they got it all set up because they don't allow me to push too many buttons up here because I mess, <laughs> mess everything up. Yeah. But, but uh, let's see here. I think Nathan Lynn's piped in here on text. He's, oh, that's uh, my buddy, man. Let's see what he says. Uh, he says uh, says it sounds good, and he's asking me if I'm recording it. So cool. We just got that information. Yeah, Nathan. I talked to him yesterday, man. I'm on my way down to Nashville. And, uh, he's moving back to Paducah, and I'm I'm happy. Yeah, we're it. all happy for that. <laughs> His newest CD is great. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, I love it. I mean, that's that's the best. at Breakers on a Sunday. So <laughs> I'm going to record. And I, I, I think that's pretty much finished. Just Now they just have to kind of mix things down. And, yeah. And so that'll be good stuff. Yeah, I'd be glad to see him back, man. Chicago is cool down. I have some friends up there and stuff like that. But, yeah, I don't know. I'll be happy to have Nathan come back. <laughs> I should, I should tell you that uh, support comes from Paris Magazine and MyParisMagazine.com. The summer issue of Paris Magazine features a multi-class reunion of seven years of HCHS graduates collaborating and raising money for scholarships. Also read delicious new recipes for grab-and-go summer salads. For more, go online at MyParisMagazine.com. Well, we're sitting in here with J.T. Oglesby. He's got a guitar in his hand, got one off <laughs> to the side, and he's playing some good music for us. What you got? What you got up next? Um, I have some originals I'm gonna do late, but I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do another cover that I really like. Um, I traced this one way back to uh, um, well, actually Lead Belly, but you know I've heard I had a lot of people tell me that it predates him. But um, old song I I arranged a little different. I kind of uh, learned. I learned it from Dave Von Rock. You know, uh, I loved his version. You know? Dave Von Rock. Yeah, and I, I was like, you know, I, I that's that's how I learned the words and stuff like that. Um, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a uh, it's called St. James Infirmary. Oh uh, yeah. Well, ah, shoot. Hang on one second. I put my capo on, and I just um, it's like my mind didn't adjust to the capo. Yes. Real quick. <laughs> it's live radio. I know. I'm nervous. <laughs> can you tell? <laughs> they they really can't yeah. see you. <laughs> yeah, you can't see me. I'm making faces right now. Y'all can't see me. <laughs> All right, so um, we'll pretend I didn't do that, and I'll just uh, I'll do it again. All right. Mm. Okay. I 
I went down to Ojo's bar room on the corner by the square. The usual crowd had gathered. Big Joe McKinnon was there. He was standing by my shoulder. His eyes were bloodshot red. He turned to the crowd that gathered, and these are the words he said. When I went down to St. James Infirmary, I saw my baby there. She was laid out on that table, lost and white, so young and fair. So let her go, let her go, God bless her, wherever she may be. He searches the whole world over, baby, never find another man like me. Need the high top stetson hat with a twenty dollar gold piece on my watch. God knows I died standing pat. I want six crap shoes for bells and a cards to sing me a song and a jazz band on my funeral wagon. Raise hell as I roll along. So let her go, let her go. God bless her, wherever she may be. Searches the world over, baby, never find another man like me. Rubber tie catch. I said, roll out your old top hat. Cause 12 men are going to the graveyard, baby, and 11 are coming back. So now that I told you my story, I'll take another shot of booze. And if anybody out there asks you, baby, just say you had the gambling blues. So let her go, let her go, God bless her. Wherever she may be, searches the world over, baby, never find another man like me. James Infirmary. That's a great cut. I, I can hear I can hear Dave Van Ronk singing that now. I uh, love that. He was a he was a Brooklyn native. Uh, yeah, a friend of mine, Jerry Rasmussen. He actually learned finger picking from Dave Van Ronk, and I mean that, that blew me away. Whenever he told me that, I was like, oh no. I mean, it's just it's always cool to meet somebody who like yeah. you know knows your hero or something like that. You know, he uh, he actually was a big influence on Bob Dylan. I think it was like sixty sixty one that Dylan moved to. Uh, New York to kind of boost his musical career, and mm-hmm. Van Rock befriended him, and those two. Uh, he was a big influence on on Dylan and Tom that, Paxton as well. Oh yeah, oh well, Paxton, I can hear it big time. You yeah, know? yeah, that's uh, yeah. Dave Van Rock, I don't know, man. He, he the cat just had soul. You know, I mean, there's just something about it. I mean, he could do the simplest songs, and even lyrically simple and and melodically simple, but it still would hit you. It was it was just something about him. He was, you know. Powerful, very and that powerful. unique voice. I mean, yeah. it, 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 you can't. It's it's hard to uh, it's hard to equal. I mean, he had this gravelly voice that uh, just sends chills down your spine, and his delivery <laughs> yeah. was really good. Uh, but uh, Dave Ron Ronk passed away two thousand and two, I believe. Yeah, it's been it's a few like years a, back. Yeah. yeah. Well, keep it moving. Let's play some more music. All right, sounds cool. Uh, okay, I was raised up. In uh, Nortonville, and uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a little bit old community. It's a little mining community, and uh, my dad was a coal miner. My grandfather was a coal miner. My brother's a coal miner. I mean, I can I have like five generations of miners before me, and all my family was into mining. And growing up in that, you know, um, other people can relate. I mean, you know, there anybody who grows up where there's a hazardous occupation, it's their primary income and everything like that. Um, Anybody can relate to it like that. And, you know, I grew up, I had cousins uh, maimed and killed and things like that in the mines. And, and it was rough. I remember as a kid crying when my dad would go to work sometimes because I was scared. You know, he wouldn't come back. And, and But then again, you also respected and loved the mines because, I mean, it gave you your food and your and your clothes and your house. And, I mean, you know what I'm saying? The money did. And so it was, I grew up with this uh, sort of 
you know, it's a dichotomy of love, hate, you know, and I respect the men who did it, you know, and, uh, anyway, so I had a cousin killed a few years, well, quite a few years back now, in a, in a, in a blast at Wheatcroft, Kentucky, a pyro, um, a lot of men did, I had a friend who was trapped underground for three days and stuff, I mean, it's horrible, you know, and, uh, it really, all those emotions kind of welled up, and I wrote this song here, um, about it indirectly. It's kind of got the wheels turning, really. I mean, I didn't write about the situation. But it that's what spurred it. And um, it's called Ghost to Appalachia. dark room my widow cry it nights and roll since the day I die bed deep low that breath in mine in Appalachia my widow cry now the old lamps burn and the cold winds moan to the hill she cried I'm all alone to my unborn child I'll be unknown in Appalachia. She's all alone. There was over my stone. I heard someone say, what the good Lord gives, mine takes away. But they need our work, and we need their pay. In Appalachia, it's the only way. Now it's a fact of life, in any mining town, that the roofs give way, and the mine shuts them down. You live to work, and you learn to pray. In Appalachia, it's the only way. Please take my child far from these hills. To the western plains or the southern fields Cause when you're born, your fate is sealed In Appalachia, where I was killed J.T. Oglesby here live on WKMS, a song called Ghost of Appalachia, an original. Yeah, it's original. That's, yeah. on the, that's on the CD I gave you. Um, I have a CD that's not really out, out yet. I did it with It a, is now. You gave it to yeah, me. Yeah, it is now. Yeah, now it's, it's kind of official out. I don't, I don't have enough copies to be selling right now. You know, that's, that's what I'm saying. It kind of like that. We're working on getting some extra, so I'm going to start selling them. Um, yeah, it's on. Ron Bankley is a singer-songwriter from uh, Canada, Quebec. And um, he and I did that CD last year. We're starting on the second CD right now. And uh, we did that CD last year, and it kind of started. It was funny how it all started. Um, we were on a Mudcat Cafe. I don't know if anybody ever gets on that. The, the, it's a folk music website. And somebody made some kind of comment about Tom Waits that they didn't like him or something. And I'm like a huge Tom Waits fan, so I jumped. I, jumped <laughs> I made up. that mistake once, <laughs> Yeah, you made a mistake <laughs> once, too. I jumped in. I jumped in. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I tore into the guy. Well, Ron responded on, you know, and liked what I said. So he emailed me and was like, uh, we got to talking through that. So one night I was writing this song, and, and it's funny. I didn't really get stuck. I just got tired of writing it, you know. And um, 
I sent it up to him, just what I had, and told him what I, record-wise what I did. And next thing you know, I, I had an MP3, and he recorded it, finished it, and recorded it. And that's how the whole CD got started, you know. And then we were like, I was like, I was formed this little thing called the Sleepy Hollow Boys. And uh, he, cha he, he changed the name later on to Thunder Thieves because that came from one of the lines of one of our songs, you know. And uh, he's a great guy. I was really, I'm really fortunate and happy to, to, to write with him. But this is a, uh, it's a funny project because we did like seven studios in, in Canada and the U.S. and it took us a year. And it was, it, it was cool. Somebody's on the phone. They'll have to hold on. We're, uh, we're live here. <laughs> yeah. um, now, Hello, I want to I want to back up here. I want to back yeah. up. I, on Facebook one day, I made the I made the mistake. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I mean, I listen to a lot of music, and just through the years, Tom Waits was somebody that I, I guess I didn't listen to enough of. And uh, geez, oh Pete, I bet I've spent. 150 bucks since you lashed me on Facebook, uh, downloading Tom Waits out songs, and yeah, I have to admit I was wrong. Oh, Tom Waits is just awesome, man. I mean, he's 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 to me he's a he's the top guy in my book. I mean, he, I just I love Tom Waits. I mean, I love his theatrics. I love his writing. I love the the way his songs sound. I mean, he's a uh, unique, and he just I can't even. I mean, he just he really epitomizes everything I like. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, let's get you to play another one so I can answer this phone call here. Yeah, sounds cool to me. Now, this is one that's in dispute. Uh, a friend of mine swears that he didn't write it and I wrote it, and I swear that he wrote it. You know, so <laughs> I'm going to leave this one as author unknown because we're in dispute on it, you know. And we're talking arguments. There's like, there's two or three of my friends that we wrote a lot together. We hung out a lot together, and it gets confusing on who wrote what because we wrote so much in those time periods. And so some of them, we were really just totally confused on who wrote and um, this is one of the ones, so I always laugh and say it just was written by Arthur Un Arthur Arthur Unknown. So, <laughs> all right, <laughs> called Guess I'm a Road. Mm -hmm. Guess I'm a road that you'll never travel Cause I got a bridge that you won't cross You've heard the tales that unravel And so many writers have lost If I was a book you'd never read me Cause my pages are torn You'll never understand the story Why my cover is worn But I guess I'm a road I've been everywhere I've been in places I'd rather not disclose Now back in the crossroads I could have met you there Man, I might have settled down Man, I don't know But I guess I'm a road Train, I wanna be a new one. Not some worn out piece still. Now you feel safe each time you climbed on. At least that's how you made me feel. But I guess I'm a road. I've been everywhere. Been in places I'd rather not disclose. Crossroads, I could have met you there. Man, I might settle down, man, I don't know. But I guess I'm a road. Of Kentucky music. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> JT Ogles be live on WKMS. We're 91.3 WKMS, 90.9 WKMD in Madisonville, 89.5 WKMT Fulton, and uh, sometime here in the near future, 1051 
Madisonville. That's an all classical station. It's uh, I think they're trying to fix that signal. We've had some reports this morning that it's down. Our engineer is on the job. He's on the spot trying to fix that as we speak. Right, row. Yeah, <laughs> things happen. Now, things happen. Now you and I first, I think, officially met at that Justin Earl thing, didn't we? That's right? yeah, right, just out, uh, just outside of the uh, of the uh, of the show. That's right. Yeah. That's when we that's when we discovered that we both lived in. And in, um, in in Seattle, about the same time. Yeah, that's when you, that's when you were like, "Hey, I don't hate him. It's cool." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris Black was playing that, and they called me and was like, um, "Come down," because I'm a huge Steve Earle fan. Yep. And um, I remember me and Chris. This is a funny story, in a way. Um, me and Chris and I were going to open for Steve Earle back years ago, and I was so pumped, I could not wait. Well, we get there on the day. I was just like, you know, and. Uh, Turned out Steve went to jail the night before, and they had to cancel the concert. So, <laughs> no, my, I just totally, I was just like, that's just my luck, man. <laughs> but then, yeah, he called me about coming to see him, Justin Towns, you know, and I came down and hung out. And Chris, not Chris Black, did a great job that night. He did a great job that night. But and Justin was awesome. He was a really cool cat. We hung out and had a lot of the same old influences and stuff like that. And uh, I really enjoyed. It. it was a good night. I like Grandpa Black. That guy's good. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. I, I I don't know why I call him that. That's I, I met him. I met him through Nathan Lynn, and yeah. that's what Nathan always called him. So I, you know, that's that's how I know him. He well. did um, the downtown hoedown was the first time I got to hear his, his whole band, you know. And um, oh man, they were great. They, it was that was really cool. I went on and did a set. I did my first, I did a full set at the beginning, and then I did a, a little set in between after Oh Yeah Dakota and before Nolan on a hog leg, and you know, did a second set then. And uh, I'm telling you, Chris and them rocked out. They were great. Mm. Well, we've got about uh, I don't know I don't know what your plans are, but we looking at the clock. We have about six minutes before we have to, or seven minutes before we have to go to the news. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, if you want to stay and play, if you need to get along, <laughs> yeah, um, now nah, I'm cool, man. All right, so you got another one for me now? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this, this is one of my uh, that's an old one. I love uh, St. Louis Blues. But I'm not gonna thumb pick this. One. I'm just gonna flat pick it. So, All right. Uh, um, yeah. So some of you thumb pickers, if you're listening, don't break my fingers using <laughs> thumb pick, flat pick. You know. <laughs>
St. Louis Blues. Yeah. And now I've often wondered. I think I know the answer to this, but and I don't really wonder about it. But was the hockey team named after the song, or was the song named after the hockey team? I'm sure the song. I'm sure the hockey team's named after the song. I'm not sure exactly. I have a, in my truck on my iPod. I have a I have a Bing Crosby doing it. Cause I'm, a, I'm a big Bing Crosby fan, believe it or not. And, Do you uh, dance like Bing Crosby? Oh yeah, you know I can cut a rug. Light on your feet. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> but when I go out and do it in public, you know, I try to look goofy because I don't want people to look. <laughs> but, 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 but you know, I shut that door, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, and actually, a lot of the version, like I just based off of, is, uh, I, I really kind of based that more off a band called Pine Hill Haynes. Um, Great band, Alabama. I love yeah. them, man. I love them. They, you talk about somebody that's almost like a soul brother musically. When I first heard them, I was just like, I don't know. It, it sounded exactly like what I was doing with my acoustic band. I mean, it was so much so, it was almost like I was ripping them, but I wasn't because I never heard of them, you know, at that point. But since then, oh, man, I, I love them. I listen to them all the time. I see. I've got <clears throat> I got to join the news in two minutes and 20 seconds. So do yeah. you have a two-minute, 20-second instrumental to take me to the news? I'll start picking one. And you just point at me, all right? right? And I'll right. end it whenever. All right, good deal. Okay, I'm going to here. JT Oglesby in the studio live here on WKMS. He's going to carry on behind me, take us up to the news, and hopefully we can uh, handcuff him to the uh, to the microphone and keep him around a little longer. We're Murray State's Public Radio Service, 91.3 WKMS Murray, WKMS HD1 and Classical HD2, 90.9 WKMD Madisonville, 89.5 WKMT Fulton, 99.5 Paris, Tennessee, and all classical, 92.5 Paducah, and 105.1 Madisonville. The news from NPR is just around the corner. Then hopefully we're back with J.T. Oglesby in the third hour of Music from the Front Porch. I'm John McMillan. <laughs> you finished a little short on me, but that's okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we got about 10 I seconds. I the signal. All right, we'll be back here in just a little bit. <laughs> there you go. Here comes the news from NPR. From NPR News in Wa- From NPR News in Washington, I'm Nora Rahm. BP officials say they fixed a problem which had idled one of the systems being used to capture oil at the spill of the Gulf of Mexico, but it's still shut down because of the weather. Eileen Fleming of Member State. We are Murray's Public Radio Service, 913 WKMS. In Murray, also 89.5 in Fulton and 99.5 Paris, Tennessee. This is Music from the Front Porch. I'm John McMillan. We appreciate the support of Eddy Creek Marina Resort, Resort on Lake Barkley near Eddyville. Eddy Creek offers lakeside getaways with rental cabins, a motel, and an RV park. Amenities, amenities include a pool and Echo Charlie's, a smoke-free restaurant open daily through September. They're online at eddycreek.com. Support also comes from Go Performance and Fitness inside the Paducah Regional Sportsplex on Highway 60 West. They're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in a safe and secure environment. Go Performance offers personalized training and group fitness programs. Go Performance welcomes everyone from those seeking personal fitness, weekend warriors, and seasoned athletes. There's more online at GoPerformance.com. 
www.terrapinstationandfitness.com. We appreciate the support of our friends at Terrapin Station at 920 South 12th Street in the Bel Air Shopping Center in Murray. Terrapin Station offers new and used compact discs, LPs, DVDs, books, and clothing by Gypsy Rose. They're open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 7, and they take trade-ins on pre-owned CDs, LPs, and books. And we're setting live. Hey, I just want to tell you before, we're going to, JT Oglesby's coming back to play some more live music, but we will get to the uh, Prince Brothers brand new album feature uh, here in just a little bit. We will play that before the hour is up. They have a new album out, just came out this week called Anti Fogmatic. You may have caught them on the Leno show this week. Uh, they played uh, Rye Whiskey, a great song from them. But we'll get to that here a little later. We like to have live music from local artists. And JT Oglesby is our guest this week. And uh, I think he's got something in mind. Yeah, I was here trying to go through. You know, it's pretty bad when you write songs and you're kind of like, uh, I don't can't hardly remember them. You know? And you can't ask anybody else yeah, how, yeah. The, how that goes, can you? But then again, it's kind of cool because you can take whatever liberties you want. <laughs> you're like, you messed up, didn't you? No, that's how I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do another. It's off that CD, you know, when I wrote. Um, I was reading Ginsburg one time, and um, he said that uh, we create the laws, therefore we create the criminals. And it, I just really dug that whole concept. And... Um, this isn't what he meant, you know, when I wrote this song. But that's just kind of what got the wheels turning to this, this story song here. It's called uh, 45 Wrote My Tail. Uh, yeah, it's one of mine. <laughs> well, my life's been plagued by killing Ever since I heard the sound J.T. Oglesby here on WKMS live music this morning. J.T. comes down from Nortonville to play, or yeah, Nortonville yeah, to play. Nortonville. And we used to like to say it Norton. Norton, yeah. yeah so, <laughs> uh, Nortonville. I remember uh, when I first started kind of getting out. Uh, yeah, I was like seventeen, and they I didn't let had, you out until seventeen. No, nah, they lined me up until then. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I broke out and all through the the leather straps and all. And, and uh, I'd be talking to people like, "Where are you from?" And of course, I'd say it like we say it with Nortonville. Yeah, and they got to announce me from different places because they wouldn't understand what I was saying. Yes, yeah, so I had to learn to pronounce Nortonville a little bit better. You know, because around home we're always like Nortonville. You know, but you know, you get away from here, especially north. You know, where are you from, Nortonville? And they're like, Yeah, I'm from Kentucky. You know, <laughs> so, yeah, I had to learn to pronounce it a little bit. Well, JT's here playing original and covers. He's played some covers mm-hmm. earlier. It's been yeah. pretty much originals here in the last three or four songs. Mm-hmm. What do you got for me now? Um, I love putting you on the spot. I'm gonna do. Uh, 
I'm gonna do a cover on this one. Uh, one of my favorite bands out of Denver is they're no more, and it makes me sad. Uh, actually, they transformed into another band. Uh, Sixteen Horsepower was the name of the band. Uh, I love them, and then they kind of broke up. And David Eugene Edwards, which is the writer and singer, he formed another band called Woven Hand. I love Woven Hand too. So I mean, it, yeah. But still, Sixteen was just something about them. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one of theirs called uh, Black Soul Choir. seen the face of his God, no, he's not made of flesh and bone, he's the one who sets up and goes beside you and you, when you say you're not alone, miles every man is evil, yeah, every man's a liar, unashamed of a wicked tongue singing in the black soul, why, every man is evil, yeah, every man's a liar, unashamed of a wicked tongue, the black soul. T. Oglesby live. This is uh, a mm-hmm. cover tune from uh, 16 Horsepower, band out of Denver. He says, Black Soul Choir. <laughs> I should have caped up on that. I had that too low, man. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I you want to try remember. it again? I'll try, I'll try it again. <laughs> we'll, we'll just hit rewind here. <laughs> That's the beauty of live uh, radio. You get to hear the flaws as well as the, you know. <laughs> Actually, speaking of rewind, um, they tell me, and uh, I won't tell you who they are, but they tell me that this is being recorded in the background. It should be available on Monday on demand on WKMS.org. So oh, that's uh, cool. That'll be a that'll be a little gift to you there. That's cool. I appreciate that, man. Hey, I, I mean, while we're talking about appreciating, I appreciate everything y'all are doing. This is really y'all promote more local arts and local artists than any other station around, and uh, I I have high respect for y'all, and I really appreciate what you're doing because I mean, like, like I said, I. I I always say the long live Kentucky music, and I always say you know stuff like that, and I mean it. It's not a thing that like a gimmick for me or anything like that. It's it's totally, I mean it. We have a lot of talent. We have a strong musical heritage, and we need to be proud of that, and we need to support that. And y'all really are taking a good role, leading road in, in it as far as like pushing. You know, you started creating a. a I appreciate those words. Um, I get out as much as I can. Uh, mm, they let yeah. me out every once in a while <laughs> as well. Uh, see yeah. as much live music as I can, and and. You know, that leads me to something. You started posting a list of Kentucky artists. Uh, it's been three yeah. or four months ago. On I think you did it on Facebook and on your Long Live Kentucky uh, mm-hmm. Music dot com. Uh, and, and it wasn't just artists that play similar styles as you. It was. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I saw John Michael Montgomery on there. I saw mm-hmm. you know some some of the uh, more commercialized. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. More <laughs> commercialized yeah. artists. Um, I mean, I even even uh, Nick Lachey was in your list. Yeah. Um, and that's you know I get out around here and I try to see artists that aren't just artists for the front porch. I mean I like to see yeah. uh, the front porch acts, but you know there, John McDaniel went down and saw him play last uh, night yeah. and plays a lot of uh, traditional country. Well, he plays a lot of old style outlaw country music. Yeah. Um, 
I love that stuff. He's <laughs> he's an extreme talent, uh, but not necessarily the the music doesn't necessarily fit with the front porch. Although I'm trying yeah. to, I'm going to try to squeeze something out of him and get him up here to play too. Oh, but that'd be cool. That guy, you know, that guy's talented, and there's other p- people around and. It's really about going to see the live show. If you're a music yeah. fan, you really got to get out and see people live because you don't know mm-hmm. what they're like. I mean, a CD, a CD can be great, but yeah. until you see them live, you really don't you do you don't experience that personality. Yeah, exactly. It's you know, recording. I mean, I've done I've done tons of recording through the years. Capturing the feel that you get live on a CD is hard. It's really hard. Um, like. I feed off the vibe of the crowd, you know. I feed off of the just, you know. I laugh and it says almost like I go into the spirit world when I play, you know. But it really is the only way I can really think to explain it, you know. And you get there and you get to truck and you get that rhythm going and you get you hit that vibe. It's like you zone out, you know. And and that's what I love. I, I love that that zone out. But when you're sitting there in a studio, it's most of the studios are so creatively sterile that <laughs> it almost dra- almost zaps you at times, you know. And it's hard to almost conjure that feeling that you get live and put it on the tape, you know? It's work. Yeah, it I is. I mean, when it you're is. in the studio, I've yeah. been in the studio, too. I mean, you're, you're looking at each other in the band. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes you're you know, sometimes you're taking multiple takes. You know, you, you, yeah. you, you've, pr- you've practiced the song a lot of times before you go in the studio, <laughs> uh-huh. hundreds of times. But when you're face-to-face with somebody and you're interacting and you can you can feel the energy from the crowd... And you can you can feel personality. I mean, you you get a mm-hmm. feeling. It's hard to explain when you're in front of a crowd. Yeah. Um, the exchange, not only from from the the crowd to the artist, but but they both feed off each other. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, it, for 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 an for a musician, there's nothing better than being in front of an interested audience exactly yeah you know and what's cool is like even when you're in front of a bad crowd, <laughs> me yeah yeah me it's kind of cool because in a way. I, it's like it's a challenge to me then. You know, I kind of take it a challenge. Like I, I'll focus on certain ones. I'm like, I'm going to make them pay attention. And I'll work and I'll push it until, you know, either they hate me or they love me. <laughs> too, you know? I just, I, I, but it's just, but, but there's but, still emotion being exactly. exchanged. See, that's the whole art. M- music is an art form. It's not a commercial package. It's an art form, you know. And it's expression. And if you get up there, whether they hate you or whether they love you, make them choose. Because if you don't move them at all, you're not doing your job as an artist. You know, you're not an artist. You know? Yeah. So me, yeah, I'm either gonna I, I'll push it to where they either love me or they're gonna run me out of town on rail, as the saying goes. You know, <laughs> Does, and I like artists like that. I like artists like that. It's kind of like you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you feel something because you know that's my job as an artist. You know, and make it extreme as you have to, as long as you get some kind of you know that's what that's what your job is to me in my mind. I mean that's the way I see it. You yeah. Know? Well, move me now. Let's play another song. <laughs> I'm going to play uh, another one from here. Uh, my great, great, great way back grandfather was one of the founding fathers of Muhlenberg County. And, of course, this is where this whole style originated. And the man responsible for it, there's, there were several, but there were several, but the key one, and it was named Mose Rager. He's one of his, my ultimate heroes. I just I love Mose. There's very few recordings of him out there. He was studio shy. He didn't like to go in the studio at all. And um, but there's, there's very few recordings of him. And I've got to be friends with his family real well. And I've heard a lot of recordings through them. And um, he wrote this little song. He wrote this m- melody. Well, Merle Travis took it and put words to it, and you know uh, wrote it about Mose. Well, the cool thing about this too is one of my grandfathers owned the store where they used to sit and pick on the front porch and where this whole style developed. He owned the store in Cleeton, Kentucky. So he, it's mentioned in the song. He'll say, hang around, sing around the country store, picking like a chicken, picking up the corn. Well, what he's talking about was the general store in Cleeton, Kentucky, which my grandfather owned at the time. So see, that's, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm tied in with this style like way back, you know. So the name of this song is Guitar Rag, and it's straight up Kentucky song. Came straight out of Drakesboro, Kentucky in Cleeton. So. <laughs>
Way down in Kentucky as a fellow my lucky by the way he makes a guitar on my own. So they hang around singing around the country store, just picking like a chicken, picking up corn, every gal in that county. Gals all around him cause he's got rhythm in his bones. He had a beat stop scooting and a shovel and drag every time he hears the rhythm of the guitar rag. Gets a moaning tone, gets a grumbling groan. So when he gets a picking and a plucking the strings, that he can make a deacon do the bucking wing. All fat and skinny, does a little shimmy and the feet start to wiggle away. Yeah, the feet start moving and shovel and drag every time he hears the rhythm of a guitar rag. Grumbling groan. So when he gets picking and plucking the string, said he can make a deacon do the bucking wing on fat and skinny. Does a little shimmy and the feet start to wiggle and wag. Yeah, the feet start moving and shovel and drag every time he hears the rhythm of the guitar rag. Oh, the feet start moving and shovel and drag every time he hears the rhythm of the guitar rag. somebody named Pennington playing that one. Ah, yeah. I remember somebody named Pennington teaching me that one. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's talk about that a little yeah. bit. Now, you mentioned earlier that, I guess, you, you said before you were 17, Eddie had kind of... I just turned 17. Just turned 17. Um, actually, I wanted to learn to play, uh, and I threw my dad's guitars. My dad had guitars around the house. He... he, he he played like th- he was like the three chord wonder, you know. He everything was like <laughs> G, C, and D, you know, and uh, and he, my uncle played, so I kind of grew up hearing, you know, a little bit of music. And um, then uh, I was up in Crofton, Kentucky, playing with a friend of mine who, who knew how to play, and uh, but not real well. And he was showing me some stuff. I had my guitars in the car. Well, I went to get gas. I pulled out some woman T-bone me right inside. You know, tell her, she was doing like sixty miles an hour, hit me on the door. I flew out of the car. And then the door collapsed and caught my knee between the steering wheel and door, pulled me back in. Well, my buddy Chucky had to pack me out. I had cracked vertebrae. And finally, I walked. You know, I could walk. You know, but busted my guitar, all except for the electric. And the electric's being fixed right now because it got tore up again. This is pretty bad luck on that guitar, but a friend of mine's fixing it. I'm going to start playing it some, too. But anyway, so during that time, I didn't have anything to do. I had cracked vertebrae. I had laying on my back. So I went over to Jim Clayton's barn, which is funny because... I'm engaged to his granddaughter now. Be you nice. Know? Oh, I'm being nice. I'm trying. That's why she's here. She smacks me in the back of the head. Yeah, she's, she's <laughs> right behind you. Yeah, it was, her grandfather had a music barn where everybody went. Well, Eddie was there that night. And I told Eddie, I can't remember if I told Eddie or my mom told Eddie or somebody told Eddie, said, JT's won't learn to play the guitar. Uh, they thought they said, Eddie, I guess, thought, I knew how to play the guitar because he asked me on stage. He's like, get up, get up here with me. So I just, <laughs> I didn't know anything. So I was like, all right. And I just, jumped up there but he started playing and he looked over at me like you want to take it and I was like I can't play you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think it probably you know, the look on his face is kind of funny like you know I remember it well just kind of like why'd you get up here if you can't play <laughs> I was like I don't know so yeah Eddie started teaching me I started going down to his house and then he started teaching me he took me to Arkansas after been playing three months I took third in championships and then after a year I took first and I took fifth at her in, in a contest out in Oklahoma while I've been playing about six months. I took real quick. It was funny because they used to call me the sponge, and and they'd be like, watch this. And they, they'd play something, and they'd say, I'll play it back. And I'd play it back to them. And, they, and, 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 you know, it got to be almost like a running joke. But what was funny is I was learning all this stuff, but I didn't know a single name of my chords. I didn't know anything. You know, so I got out to Seattle. Richard Lick was like, um, let's play a song, and we're going to do it in G. And I was like, uh, what's G look like? And he was like, wait a minute, you're playing, you know, Cannonball Rag, you're playing all these other songs. He said, you don't know what G chord is? I was like, I don't know what any of my chords are. And so we took a weekend where he just kind of taught me some theory. And, and from there, I took it on myself, learned the theory and chord names and stuff like that, you know. But yeah, Eddie taught me for probably about, I don't know, it was, it was only about a year, about two year and a half, two years, something Eddie really taught me a lot as far as like going down lessons. 
And after that, I started gigging a lot and playing in bands and doing sessions and things like that. So, you know, after that, we just kind of drifted apart on that. But I love him to death because, I mean, if it wasn't for Eddie, there's no way I'd be sitting here right now. Well, know? there's a lot of people like that. And, and you got to be careful with Eddie. If you're anywhere near a, a stage where Eddie's playing and you got to. Mm-hmm. An instrument with you. He's going to do exactly to you, to you yeah, with that exactly. instrument what he did to you that day. He'll call you up on stage, yep. mm-hmm. and uh, he's really good about that. There's you know there's quite a few people in our region who have uh, been influential on other artists, and Eddie's one of those. Oh I mean, yeah, he's definitely. Very accommodating, and uh, yeah, and Eddie's definitely the modern Mose Rager. I mean, it's unpicking circles. You know, Mose Rager is just up there on a the pedestal hard because, I mean, you know, he, he really kind of took on. He he wasn't the one who, who initially put on the thumb pick. He wasn't the one, but there was just something about his playing, you know. And he influenced tons of people, taught tons of people. And uh, if it wasn't for Mose, it probably wouldn't be going the way it is today. You know, Merle, of course, took it out, and he spread it to the world and wrote great songs like 16 Tons and all that stuff like that. But... You know, something about Moe's, man, really influenced people. And Eddie was one that learned from him. And then Eddie has really kept it alive in my book. I mean, I, he has total, I have total respect for Eddie because, you know, I, I push it. And so, but I do a lot of different stuff, too. You know, I do different styles. I write. Because you know, I love all kinds of music, you know. And uh, But I push and try to keep I don't want to see it die out. It's a form I do not want to see die out. But Eddie stays true to the form and really create, keeps pushing the traditional. And I, I have total respect for him for that. Mm-hmm. Real quick here, um, let's see. You're listening to 91.3 WKMS, 90.9 WKMD in Madisonville, 89.5 WKMT Fulton, and All Classical 105.1 Madisonville. Support comes from Paducah Printing Corporation at North 8th Monroe in downtown Paducah. Their digital services include high-speed copies, color copies, and large-format posters. They're on the web at paducahprinting.com. We're grateful for the support of Dr. Frank Block, MD, Allergy and Asthma Care. Dr. Block provides patient-centered care specializing in, specializing in, aller- in allergic disorders for all ages. For more, call 800-359-4764. We also appreciate the support of City National Bank of Metropolis, Illinois. JT's tuning down. Yeah, I'm trying to be quiet, but I'm sorry. <laughs> no, uh, we we kind of like that cafe style here. And uh, we've got time for probably a couple more with JT, and then i got to get to that uh, Punch Brothers feature. I'm dying to listen to more of that myself. So uh, you're on. you gotta have, you got to play. Your, it's, it's, it's like Sunday. you gotta, you got to shine up your shoes. you know, you got to wear your best shoes. So you've got two songs. you got to play your two best ones. Um, I'm going to play one. One of my favorites, man. Um, this is another one that was kind of a banjo song I converted, you know. Um, Clarence Ashley is who I learned this one from too. So he's a big mm-hmm. Clarence Ashley is a big influence on me. It's called the Cuckoo. Gonna build me a log cabin on a mountain so high, so I can see with her as she goes. Walking by on oh, cuckoo, she's a pretty bird. While she wobbles when she flies, she'll never say cuckoo. That fourth day of July. Of 
here on music from the front porch and uh we're down to uh just uh we, well, he's been he's been here with us for a little over an hour we appreciate you coming in i appreciate let's, you having me man let's talk a bit a little bit about uh what you've got going on maybe some of the places people can catch you live um the 26th i'm playing at the star in Paducah. now where is that that's down broadway um in the right now <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Doe's, the same street the Doe's is on. Is that Broadway? It is Broadway. Oh, uh, yeah, cool. Okay, it's, on, it's on the upper end. If you take the Lord's exit, it'll um, take you right down there to it, you know. And a uh, really cool place. I played there on the 11th. I played uh, the Superman Festival in Metropolis with Rocket Boosters during the day, um, actually from 5 to 6. And then I played the Star from 8 to midnight that night. So I did a solo set at the Star. And, and that, what's cool the date place, again? Uh, the 26th. Uh, Bazooka Magazine. It's their year anniversary party, and um, it's gonna be cool. It's a twenty-one up show. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be different. It's gonna be cool. Who, are, who else <laughs> is playing with you at that? Um, I'm having a friend, Patson, uh, from Muhlenberg County. He's gonna play drums with me, and I'm not gonna have a bass player. I don't think. Um, Patson is a killer artist. He's great. He's a solo. He's a graphic artist. He draws stuff like me. He has amazing talent with that. And he's also a one man band, and he, he he does a lot of stuff with me. He uh, plays the guitar and the drums at the same time. Like I'm talking, like not not just sit there with a the kick drum, the full drum set, cymbals, everything. And he tapes guitar picks to his fingers, and he holds the drumstick, and then he plays and hits the drums at the same time. And it's it's amazing. He feels like a, he sounds like a full band, you know. And uh, so he's been doing some gigs with me and stuff like that. I'm trying to push him some because he's awesome. He's from Greenville, Kentucky. Or Greenville. Sorry, I said Vol. Yeah, but most Kentuckians here, so y'all understand what I'm saying. We know what you're talking about. Yeah, so he, he's right there from the home and has huge respect for Merle Travis and Mose Rager and stuff like that. But he, I mean, he's rock. I mean, he's not, you know, there's, he's, he's really rock. But like that, I said earlier, that whole LLKM thing, it applies to everything. I don't care what type of music. If you're from Kentucky and and, and actually being true, uh, Kentucky, you know, you know yourself, you were out in Seattle, you know how you got out there, and, and did you ever get made fun of? I did. They wanted to hear me talk, and I didn't even exactly. think I had an accent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's like I hear people that whole, oh, I'm a hick. I'm, like, I'm tired of that. Man. That's <laughs> not right, man. We're just as good. We're just as smart. We're just as, <laughs> more talented than the rest of people out in the country. So, I mean, there's no reason for us to be ashamed of where we're from, and I don't want to be. And that's another reason I'm pushing them. I mean, we need to be supportive of our our musicians. So, yeah, but also, be proud of our culture. Be proud of who we are, man. Yeah. All right, so you're playing at the Star on the 26th. It starts at what time? Um, 10. It starts at 10. 10 p.m. All right, I'm getting this down. So August 26th, that. me and Tommy Oliverio, uh, I think Josh Coffey, are doing something in Nashville, but I don't have a whole <laughs> lot of details on that. I just know we're playing in Nashville somewhere. Um, I'm playing Discover Downtown uh, in Madisonville, but I think it's like June 9th or July 9th. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it'll be up on my webpage soon long live kentucky music.com yeah long live kentucky music.com i'm on facebook too and i do a lot of updates on facebook i mean you've seen it but people may not be friends with me on there or something um i update a lot a lot of times i'll tell like where i'm going that night and stuff and what's funny is i do by by, by doing hiring out like hire a gun you know sometimes you don't know i mean yeah i may be sitting on the couch and I'm like oh i don't have anything to do and the next thing you know within five minutes i'll have 20 phone calls and have be booked solid for the next week so a lot of stuff comes up spur of the moment. There's some that I know I'm forgetting, but uh, I'm supposed to be playing the Henderson Fair with a guy, but I don't have any details on that either. You know, <laughs> I don't even know the guy. You know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I bet yeah I may be sitting in jamming with the Dirt Divers tonight. If not, I'll be listening. I don't know. JD always gets me up there when I come. He, he he's giving me a, a 
uh, open invitation for whenever I want to play. So, you know. Um. That, that reminds me, um, Chuck Berry used to, if you, Chuck Berry would, he, he did not have a band. Yeah. Um, and if you hired Chuck Berry, in the contract, you had to provide a band, and it stipulated what instruments. And there was no rehearsal. Yeah, Chuck oh, I, drove I the truck up. <laughs> Chuck drove the truck up to the stage, walked on the stage, stomped his foot, and you you better be ready to go and get oh, yeah. and, and know what song he's playing. And at the end of the night, if he liked how you played, yeah, he, he paid you. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. I like this. You know, one of the reasons I hire, I hire out so much is because. Basically, all you have to do is tell me key, you know, and you, you tell me key, and and I'll go through it. I mean, yeah, and and uh, I've always been like that, and I like that. Rehearsals do kill me. I'll admit, <laughs> right? I do not like rehearsals. I'll do them if I have to, but I do not like them. <laughs> so. All right, well, we've got time for one more. What do you got for me? I'm gonna do another cover of one of my favorites. You know, um, this is one a lot of you may know, um, Shady Grove. <laughs> Once again, another song I learned from Terrence Ashley. Doc Watson actually taught me a song one time, though. I did admit, Doc Watson was a huge influence on me, too. You know, and Doc Watson and Clarence Ashley were together all the time. And uh, Doc Watson, you know, sometimes y'all have me down again, I'll play you the song that Doc taught me. But that was that was a big, oh, I loved that. It was just the coolest that Doc Watson was sitting there. And then he changed the strings on his guitar and he gave me a string, you know. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Doc Watson's string. Oh man, I can tell you all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I have stories like you would not believe. I told her, I told my fiance one time, I said, Yeah, when I die, they're going to have to bury or dig six graves just to bury the story. <laughs> <laughs> I say, Shady Grove, my little love, I'm bound to go away. Eyes bright as blooming rose and her lips are pretty as brown. She's a darling of my heart, prettiest little girl in town. Shady Grove, my little love, Shady Grove, I say, Shady Grove, my little love, I'm bound to go away. I set it down on Lonesome Bluff and I'd give it all to you. When I was a little boy, I wanted a bottle of knife. Now I am a great big boy, I'm looking for a wife. With Shady Grow, my little love, Shady Grow, my darling. Shady Grow, my little love, I'm going back to Harlem. JT Oglesby live here on Music from the Front Porch here on WKMS. Hey, man, thanks a lot for coming down and playing. Thank you for having me, man. And and like I said, I appreciate what y'all are doing. I really do. Well, thanks a lot. And uh, I'm going to catch you on the 26th at 10 o'clock at the Star in Paducah. And it's on the 
And it's gonna be a, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be for the faint of heart. That's gonna be, a, that's gonna be a pretty cool little gig. There's belly dancers and go go dancers and everything gonna be there, and it's gonna be a blast. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> I'm probably the only thumb picker ever to have belly dancers and go go dancers on stage, but you know. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're I'm gonna odd. be, you're gonna be playing at the <laughs> roller derby. <laughs> hey, that'd be cool. <laughs> well, you know this this link evolved. This is where rockabilly evolved from, and that's what a lot of the cats are starting to really catch is that, you know, this whole thumb picking thing really helped start the, the whole. Uh, um, uh, oh, I'm blanking now. I'm sitting there. I was trying to rush it in, and I went blank. Elvis's first Scotty Moore, uh, Elvis's first guitarist. Me and him were talking one day, and he told me directly that what him and Elvis were doing when he was playing the guitar, he was trying to mimic Merle Travis. You know, and so I mean, so we, we, you know, this this evolved here, so you know that fits right in because that whole the whole rockabilly go go to answer all that stuff like that, roller derby, so <laughs> they're all in that. Yeah, it fits because this is the roots of rockabilly. You know. All right, we're gonna get into the Punch Brothers brand new album now, yeah. and I'm gonna get off the air and say goodbye to JT, but uh, we appreciate him again coming in. But here are f- actually five cuts from the new album from the Punch Brothers. This is anti fogmatic. We'll start off with Don't Need No. That'll be followed by Two Hearted, Rye Whiskey, Next to the Trash, and hopefully we'll get some Friend or No More. This is the Punch Brothers, their brand new album, Anti-Fogmatic. Hello, (laughs) KM. 